What's up everyone, we're Ben and Jelaine with Nomadic Visuals back with another van build video. In today's video, we'll be discussing how we installed our subfloor. We made this janky template from leftover cardboard from the windows. And now we're going to transfer this template onto a full sheet of cardboard for another template. So we have the first template complete. Moving on to the second one. It's pretty basic. We just have to notch out for these columns on each side. And other than that, it's pretty well a full sheet. So we've got two of the templates done. The next one is the wheel wells, which you can see there's a ton of different angles. So it's gonna take a lot of time, but first we're gonna get some lunch. <laughs> love nachos and that's the sole reason we plan to put a van in our oven. <laughs> and that's the sole reason we plan to put an oven in our van. So the templates are done. Time to transfer this over to the wood. You might be wondering why we didn't run it all the way to the wall. And that's because this actually starts to slope uphill. And if we ran it all the way to the wall, then the plywood that we stick on the floor won't be touching the high spots. I'll uh, show you what we mean by that. All right, so if we ran these pieces all the way to the wall, we would be dealing with this. See how they're not touching the ribs and we'll actually be gluing the plywood down to the ribs. So that's kind of important that they touch. Not bad, not bad. Now all we have to do is glue it in. Mm -hmm. 
I wanted to take a second and talk about our flooring. I know I've called it plywood quite a few times, but in reality it's Advantech. It's used in homes as a subfloor, and the reason why we used it over plywood in here is because it has tongue and grooved edges, so the edges actually interlock with one another. That way you don't have two square pieces rubbing together and squeaking when you're walking on it in the future. So it's really a more stable solution. And then we're just going to glue that down to the floor. And I know what you're thinking, you're probably like, oh no, Ben and Jelaine, you're not putting insulation under your floor. And that's true, but we're going to have radiant floor heat in the areas that we walk, so it'll be warm regardless. I used to live in a home that the master bedroom was cantilevered over an open air section, and the floors in there were cold regardless. It didn't matter if it was summer, winter, what, it had about eight inches of blown in insulation and the floors were always cold. So since Jelaine and I are both tall, we're going to go ahead and nix the insulation to save all the headspace that we can in here. And then we'll have the radiant floor heat to keep our feet warm. So hopefully that works. <laughs> All right, we're putting the finishing touches on the subfloor, made a few mistakes. So apparently on one of the panels we put down, the glue didn't really adhere very well, so the floor popped up. I was like, oh, I'll just put a couple of screws in there, which was great and it held everything down. But I crawled up under the van and the screws are poking down where our gray water tank is going to be. So that's not going to work for us. Just going to pop those out and replace them with some T-nuts and a couple of bolts and we should be good to go. Show you what everything looks like in a second. So we're up under the van and I'll show you where these screws came through. Ooh. So these are the screws that poke through the floor and in this little cavity is where we're going to be putting our gray water tank. So. Obviously that's not going to work out. We're going to back these out and replace them with bolts. This is what we'll be replacing the screws with. They have these little teeth on them. And we'll just sink it flush down into the floor and then run the bolt up to the bottom. As you can see, these are a lot more flush than the screws were, so should have plenty of room for that gray water tank. The van came with these D-rings and we pulled them up so we could level the floor out pretty good and now we're gonna secure the floor back down with these rings and we've made a handy dandy map of all of those holes. As you can see, it's super detailed and super precise, so wish us luck.
Hey everybody, thanks again for watching our video. If you're new here, this is the section where we talk about our tips, tricks, mistakes, and even our cost of our build. The very first thing I believe is like one of the most important things is cardboard. Have cardboard, like big sheets of cardboard. I think ours were four by eight yep. sheets of cardboard. And we had like six of them and we used them through the entire build. We use them to trace out all of like the cuts that we need to make. And um, it's easier to maneuver the actual cardboard versus the big pieces of wood. And then you can just throw the cardboard on top of the wood, trace it out and then cut it. It makes it life super simple um, when you're actually cutting the wood. And it's also better to make a mistake on the cardboard rather than the wood that you just bought, especially with the way wood prices are right now. Um, we bought our first sheet of Advantech, which is what we use on the subfloor, like right when wood prices started to peak. So the cost is a little bit more than it typically would be. Um, I think things are coming back down now, so might not be as expensive for you when you do your subfloor. We decided not to insulate the floor because we wanted to maximize the headspace for us since we're so tall, but do whatever feels right for you. Some people definitely insulate the floor, some don't. I mean, it's a huge controversy in the van world as we found looking through YouTube videos and watching those of people that insulate. A mistake that we ran into was we just glued the floor down and then we like weighted it down with these big um, like concrete type blocks, but the glue didn't actually adhere. I don't know if we didn't leave the blocks on long enough. So we ended up having to put T-nuts up through the floor anyway. So if I were to do it again, I think I would go ahead and glue everything and then put the T-nuts in immediately. That way it just like permanently bonds everything together. And I think that would be a better solution. And also, Definitely be aware of anything that you're going to be putting under the van, such as gray water tanks, black water tanks, propane tanks. We are going to be installing a gray water tank under ours, as I discussed in the video. And um, if you're using screws and not T-nuts, you can definitely put screws in areas that you'll be puncturing a tank. It's something to be aware of because the next step would actually to be put the flooring in before you would stick your gray water tank in. So. Once the actual flooring's in, you wouldn't have access to back those screws out. So just something to keep in mind to save headache later on. All right, so our final tip is to never put your van in the oven. Jelaine is notorious <laughs> for mixing her words up and we just thought it was too funny and had to add that part to the video. The final cost after glue, T-nuts, Advantech, and cardboard was a total of $242. Wish they were all this cheap. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us today. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already. It really helps the channel. And if you have any questions or suggestions, please drop them in the comments. We love to hear your feedback and we will answer all of the comments. We're Ben and Jelaine with Nomadic Visuals and we'll see you in the next one.